Hello, 8th graders and possibly 7th graders, although, well, actually, more likely than usual 7th graders. Um, estimating square roots. Remember that we estimate by uh, checking which two numbers it comes between. So you just go down the line until you find the two that it fits between. That is uh, how we estimate it. So for instance, problem number one here, square root of 14. Go down the line here, 0, no, 1, no, 4, 9. Ah, 16, that's bigger than 14. So 14 is between 9 and 16. The way I like to write this, you don't have to write it this way, but most people say it helps. Square root of 9, that's 3. Square root of 16 is 4, so it's between 3 and 4. So 3 point something. Which is it closer to? It's closer to the 16 because uh, it's closer to 16, so this will be closer to the 4. So it needs to be something that rounds, that's 3 point something that rounds up to 4. So you could have, this is how the quiz is actually written on the um, answer keys. 3.6, 3.8, 3.7, 3.9 is how I'd write that that any of those are okay. And of course, you can also give more digits than that. 3.74, 3.65. So long as you have something that rounds up to 4, you're good. You cannot put a 0.5. The reason I don't like the 0.5, most people just guess that if it's in between, but it's kind of a lazy guess. Uh, I want you to actually be thinking, which one is it closer to? 3.5 is putting it right in the middle. 14 is not right in the middle, so that's just not a great guess. Um, yeah. It turns out when you actually do the square root of this one, shoot, where did I put my calculator? <sighs> really annoying that both my 8th grade and 9th grade lessons lately I needed a calculator for to check. If we do the square root on the calculator, it gives us uh, 3.7416. And so on. It goes on forever and ever. If we just had three digits, those would be 3.742. So it's 3.74 that I guessed was actually pretty close. Square root of 26, let's do that one. We'll do, uh, like, yeah, let's go through all the ones on the warm-up, and then there's another page later on that has more of these, and we'll do those. So, if you didn't know how to do that on that problem, try out the rest of the problems here. If you haven't yet done them, pause the video, try them, yeah. Square root of 26, so that's between square root of 25 and 36. So that means our answer is between 5 and 6. So it's going to be 5 point something. 26 is close to 25 by a good bit, so that might be like 5.1. I'd accept 5.2, 5.3, or 5.4. For the bonus point on this quiz, you have to get at least one digit correct, which the 5.1 is the closest you could have. Um, I think it's actually going to be a bit less than 5.1. It's maybe 5.094. I don't know. Square root 26. Oh, 5.099. Whoops. Ding, there we go. 5.099. Square root of 76, that's between square root 64 and square root 81. Square root of 64 is 8, square root of 81 is 9, so it's between 8 and 9, 8 point something. 76 is closer to 81, if you're ever wondering, just subtract them. 81 minus 76 is 5, 76 minus 64, seriously, the phone's ringing, is uh, 12. Hello. Yes. Okay. Bye. My SS. Oh. Wait. Yes, you. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm sure you're not in trouble. Probably. Okay. Shh. No laughing. So, notice how carefully there, because I'm putting this on YouTube, I do not want to be saying the name of the person that's getting called down or whatever. So, I made sure to do that without saying any names. Anyway, um, so this one here, it's closer to the 9. That's got to be 8.6 or 8.7 or whatever. Turns out if we actually do that, square root of 76. And of course, you don't have to get every single digit correct. If you just had uh, 8.6, that'd be good enough. Turns out that it's 8.717, or actually 8.718, so you round it up. Um, if you had 8.7, you get the bonus. If you had 8.6, you get full credit, but not the bonus. There are four questions on the quiz, so you have kind of a one in four chance on each problem. So you should be able to get at least one of them if you guess well. Think about how close it is to each one. Notice this is a little bit closer, but not a lot closer to the 9, and so 8.7. Anyways, square root 147. That's between 144 and 169. Yeah, it's sort of funny. Uh, some of my students were complaining that there are bigger numbers on this one because they uh, said, well, we don't know those numbers as well. Yeah, we don't, but you know what? Once we have them, we can make those estimates. I could give you the numbers 
up to 100, and you can do square root up to 1,000, up to 10,000. All it takes is just having the correct numbers that are the squares, and then find which two it's in between. Um, so this is between those, it'll be 12 point something. It's closer to the 144, so it's 12 point something small. Um, I'm gonna say 12.1 is probably our best one digit, but if you had 12.4, that wouldn't be wrong because it still is closer to the 12. Again, it's all I'm asking for is that you can recognize which one it's closer to, and you know how to show that your estimate is closer to that. Square root of 147 is in fact 12.124. Problem number five, we've got that 203, so that's between 196 and 225. Square root of 196 is 14, square root of 225 is 15, so this is going to be 14 point something. Notice I use the approximately equals, that's because these are not exactly equal. Even with the calculator, it's not exactly equal. With the calculator, it gives you 10 digits, 12 digits, whatever. Even if it gives you a million digits, not exactly equal. You have to have an infinite number of digits for it to be exactly equal. If it's not an infinite number of digits, then you don't have an equality on it. Um, yeah. So this ends up being 14.2478. So if you had 14.2, that would be close enough to get the bonus point. Oh, there's also a bonus. Whoever does the very best on estimating overall, out of all my classes, gets a candy bar of their choosing. And last one here, square root 387. So 387 between 361 and 400. So that's between 19 and 20. 19 point something, let's say it's closer to the 20 there, so let's go with 19.8. And that's like, I'm going to leave it at that. Honestly, we don't need anything more than that. We are just making an estimate. We don't need it to be exact. So, yeah. Um, let me just say, these numbers up here, these square numbers up through uh, 400, those are worth knowing. Those are worth being familiar with. Um, square numbers, there are a variety of problems where square numbers come in handy, where square numbers, or rather it's, it's, there's problems where you see a square number and that number is an important number because it's a square number. That knowing it's a square number might help you to solve that problem. You're going to start running into those in 10th grade and 11th grade especially, but already being sort of familiar with these will help you with those types of problems because when you have a problem where it's important that you know that the square root is seven, that 17 squared is 289, you want to see that 289 and say, oh, that's 17 squared, which will then tell you you're dealing with some sort of quadratic situation or something like that. There's all sorts of different things, but yeah. Anyway, um, we had a quiz on this day. It was after doing, let's see, class business, the usual stuff, box tops, doing box tops, leaving, well, not if you're leaving, quizzes, retake quizzes if you need to. Uh, homework, if there's homework, get it done. Teddy bears, we're doing that teddy bear and stuffed animal drive. Drive. Three good things. Think about positive good things that are going on. Today's objective, we'll better understand estimating square roots, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. We'll leave that in suspense for now. Do these four problems on your own. This is how the quiz kind of looks. Between this and that, that would mean that, like, if you had one that was between, say, square root of 64 and square root of 49, that's between 7 and 8 is what you'd put for that. Not just, uh, not the 64 and the 49. You'd put the two integers between and the estimate where you put your final answer. So today we're on the best at squares, dot, dot, dot. Whoops, where's the thing? There it is. And cube roots. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, there's also cube roots. It's a thing. Uh, let's move on to that. Cube numbers. Square numbers are where you multiply a number by itself. Cube numbers you multiply by itself twice. So one cube, that's one times one times one. That equals one. Um, two cubed. Two times two times two. Eight. And so on. Uh, cube numbers are also worth knowing. Cube numbers, I don't want to say through, uh, through ten cubed. See, square numbers through, uh, twenty squared and cube numbers through ten cubed, those are numbers that tend to come up on tests, whether that is your teacher's test at the end of a unit, or whether that's a ACT, an ACT or SAT you're taking to get into college to get scholarships. Those are the numbers they feel like are fair to expect someone to know. That they might have a problem that involves a 216, that you'll see a 216, and you need to recognize, oh, that's a cube, and that cube means that there's a specific way I'm dealing with this problem. 8 cubed, 512, 9 cubed, 729, and 10 cubed, 
1,000. Those are the cubes. Cube roots. Cube root is written kind of like square root with a 3 there. Technically, a square root should be written with a 2, but I should assume if there's not a 2 there, that you mean square roots. Square root's the most common root by far. Cube roots aren't used nearly as often. But they do come up from time to time. Cube root of 512 would be equal to 8. But what if we had, like, cube root of 500? We actually estimate that the exact same way. What 2 would that be between? Oh, the 512 is already there. And the 343. And that's 7. So cube root of 500 is going to be between 7 and 8, 7 point something. It's closer to the 8 by a good bit, so maybe 7.9 something. There's cube roots, there's fourth roots, fifth roots, sixth roots, and so on. For every number, there's a root for it. You could do a pyth root if you wanted to. It wouldn't make any sense at all, but you could do a root to the pyth power. Great times. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you're watching this because you weren't here today, make sure you take the quiz sometime because that will hurt your grade significantly if you don't. See you later. Have a good, uh, have a merry Thanksgiving, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.